guest producer and this week's host of OMN TV. And I do hope we can get through this week without any problem. With us today we have a, I'm going to say a young band, since they are younger than I am, and um, we hope to get their heads like this, okay. The band is called the Sandra Good Band, and I'm going to repeat the question I said earlier, why isn't it the Sandra Hosgood Band? <coughs> well, I, that is my last name, Hosgood, and I just thought, I thought it was a little more catchy to take out the Hog part and put the good in it. So we've got the standard good band, that's what we came up with. And um, yeah, it fits, fits with the rock band as, as opposed to the Sandra Hosgood band. Uh, and Sandra, while we're talking to you at the moment, uh, it, it, I, I read that you were born in Toronto. I don't know how long you stayed there, but you were raised in, I want to say maybe a little town in Milton, is that? Yeah. Small town, Milton, Ontario. Um, and you started writing music at the age of 13? Yep. But you said, you, okay, you started music at the age of 13 basically as far as writing, but you didn't form your band until about four years ago. True enough. I, um, I did a lot of writing, a lot of like poetry and whatnot, I turned them into songs. Um, but as I said, I... I'm a late bloomer, and um, I started, I performed, I uh, got the band together about four years ago, and um, yeah, just, I said, you know, it's better late than never, right, so. And uh, also what I read up is that you studied music theater, um, not just music, but music theater at Sheridan College, and I think you said that was located west of Toronto, that's about yeah. like a, an hour away, give or take. Yeah, it's in a town called Oakville, Ontario, and uh, I was very active in, in theater, and that's what I, I kind of wanted to pursue back then, um, just, you know, being in musicals, and that was that was where I, where I saw myself going, and the direction just changed. And, and the gentleman to your left is Greg Lytle. Um, he's your drummer and vocalist. Yes. No. And he's our drummer. Okay. Drummer. Yeah. Okay. And your nickname, of course, fits fits the fact that you play the drums and it's called the beat. Okay. okay. Now, how long have you been uh, uh, in the field of music? I've been playing drums since uh, about 1977. I got together with uh, my buddies in high school, and one of my buddies is a singer, one of the bass players, one of the guitar player. And they needed a drummer, so they went to me, and uh, I started to get things. And thus, uh, they call me the beat. I'm more of a groove drummer as opposed to uh, a solo drummer. And I like to sit in the pocket. And I love to play Gary and uh, Sandra's songs. We sort of have that chemistry. And uh, they call me more than a beat, but I can't really tell you what they call me. <laughs> That's one of the names. Now, the, uh, the gentleman to... Sandra's right hand side is uh, Barry Forshu, correct? That's correct. Now, lead guitarist, vocalist as well? Yeah, uh, lead guitarist and uh, background vocalist. Now, your band is a four, four member band? That's correct. And, and the party that we don't see right now, that's, uh, that's Pete. Olmstead, yes, and he's the bass guitarist uh, okay. and, and vocal. Was yeah, he? Yeah. Couldn't make it today. The um, the first song that we're coming up that we will be uh, showcasing is called uh, "Devil and Me." Who wrote that? And uh, well, I'm 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 assuming that <laughs> and we won't spell out what that means, but I'm assuming that everyone had a hand in putting that together. Yeah, Barry wrote the, he, he came up with the idea of the song, so it starts with the guitar, right? So he wrote the, um, the rhythm, the leads, um, he gave me the idea of the song so I could then write the lyrics and the melody and collaborate, and then we get together with our, our band, our drummer and our bass player, and we all have an input in the song. So it, it does start with Barry and I as far as the writing aspect is. Okay, now for you out there, uh, 
just to look at or and listen to what we're just talking about. Here's the song, Devil in Me, by the Sandra Good Band. Enjoy. to realize that she had a passion for singing and songwriting growing up, listening to the sounds of Janis Joplin, Hart, and Fleetwood Mac. Now, Hart is, is really kind of distant from Joplin and Fleetwood Mac, <laughs> as far as concept. I mean, wow. I mean, you got that Swedish pop kind of music uh, from one side, and it's all soft and harmonic, and, and then you get the Janis Joplin, and you feel like you're being ripped apart by a, a by a knife, is because she's so gruff with her voice, and she just and she just puts it out there. And she's one of my favorites when I was younger, and Fleetwood Mac. Love the 
the concept. Yeah. No, I mean, there was. Stevie Nicks to me sort of came close to Janis Joplin as far as how she would how she was singing, but I just looked at it because it was a, a different style of of music. Because you know how you know how Janis Janis was. I mean, she's just she's just rough and tough and almost feels like she wants to get into a fight every time she opens her mouth. And whereas Fleetwood Mac is like. Let, let's, let's go to, uh, oh, let's, let's just go to, let's say, Woodstock and then just have fun there and just groove with the sounds, kind of an atmosphere. So, I mean, yes, your voice, your vocals are, are right up there to me with, uh, with Joplin and uh, Stevie Nicks. But I was trying to figure out where Hart came in from, uh, other than one or two of the songs, maybe. <laughs> Well, I just, you know what, I just, I love Ann Wilson. I, I've i always loved her music, and it, it inspired me. And her voice, way up there, it's one of, my, one of my favorite voices out there, so. No, I, if you could pick three uh, individuals to emulate, you couldn't pick the better three. Yeah, yeah. And I think I left one out. I would say Pat Benatar. No. Absolutely love her. It said. It also said that you you were influenced by a, a, a number of other individuals outside of Janis Joplin, Hart, and Fleetwood Mac. Um, Led Zeppelin. Not uh, me personally. That would be my guitar player, Barry. Okay. You know, who would emulate Bob Seger? Because Bob Seger was my was my all time favorite. I think I think that for all of us. Bob, Bob Seger. Well, Bob Seger, I can listen to all day long. Um, now, I assume Pink would be yours. Yeah. I like uh, yes. I mean, I'm an old dude, but uh, her music still gets me going, gets that heart going. I mean, it, it, it's she's outstanding. Adele, wow. At my age, She's perfect. I mean, because it's it's smooth. Uh, Eric Clapton. Well, that brings back the old days. Uh, you know, with cream and what have you. And I'm saying I miss those days. <laughs> so, oh, oh God, that brings me back to my high school days. And uh, if my if my co-host was here today, because we're the same age, we're only like a month and a half apart in age. Um, He'd be reminiscing plus because he's been playing uh, oh, with bands for about 50 plus years. Uh, so I mean, his music basically is country music, but he he still goes back to the early days of the early rock uh, on top of it. Now, the next song that's coming up that uh, you're going to be showcasing is called Hard to Tell. Can you explain what that song is all about? So um, the song Hard to Tell, so um, most of our songs, like I said, are relationship, about relationships, and uh, that song I wrote, um, just, you know, speaking to somebody, meaning it's hard to tell you how hard it is to be in this relationship. It's, it's you know, very lyrical, and you need to listen to the lyrics to understand the song. Um, so. Okay, well, for you out there, uh... Hard to tell, but the sounds are good band. Enjoy. <laughs>
Okay, we're back, and for those that are just tuning in, we are talking with a band from Ontario, and I want to say Milton, and the band is called Sonder Good Band. Very, very Ontario. Where? Very Ontario. Very Ontario. I had, a, I had the misfortune of thinking that was Milton, or you're from Milton. Well, that's, where, that's where I was born and raised. Okay, so the band is from yeah. Barry. Yeah, we all live in Barry. Yeah. Okay. So folks, it's Barry. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if we, we, we might have touched on it a little bit. Um, how did the band form exactly? How did you guys meet? Well, um, I was playing in the Sandra Good Band with other band members. And uh, Barry, my guitar player, used to come out and watch us play and um, approached me and asked me if I wanted to do some writing with him. And uh, things weren't really working out so much with my other band members. But at that time, we started collaborating and writing music together on the side. And then there just came, became an opportunity for us to, I, I don't want to say, got rid of my other band members, but formed a new band with these guys, and that's how we formed. So I assume you guys like each other. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. We're yeah. like a family, you know, yeah. they're my brothers, right? I mean, I... I, I, I deserve, don't get me wrong. But oh, I, 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 well, I, asked, I asked that of another performer, and, and I had the um, her... Um, Promoter, producer, and sitting right beside her at the time. He says, "I ah, know, I hate him." <laughs> <laughs> so, now, you said that you started playing in the band uh, four years ago. Now, this band that you have at the moment, this is not the original, correct? And so, if that's so, how long have you guys been together? Um, well, I was with my first band, the Sandra Good Band. Um, for a year and a half, so I think two and a half. We're coming up on three years. This year will be three years that I've been with these guys. Okay, well, <laughs> I was going to try to lead this into the next song, but it's not going to fit. So, uh, the next song that's coming up is called Broken Hearted. <laughs> so, um, can you describe what that song is all about? Well, Barry did an awesome job at writing. Um, writing the guitar part to fit the lyrics that I wanted for a particular song like that. Um, broken hearted, pretty self explanatory again about relationships and um, how you get broken hearted. <laughs> I mean, like I said, listening to the song, it's very easy to understand what the song is about when you hear it. So. Well, I, I, can, I can attest that every one of the songs that you're going to be hearing. Uh, on this week's show is, uh, is they're outstanding so uh, you're going to love them regardless but you should listen to the words as well so here, here we go broken hearted but it's not a good band enjoy I'm broken hearted if this is your love I'm broken hearted when push comes to shove, I'm broken hearted. If this is your love, I'm broken hearted. When push comes to shove. You in my bed, but 
Where do you see this band going, this particular band? Well, hopefully far. <laughs> that, that is our goal. We work really hard as a band. Um, it's not it's not just, I mean, it, it, the first and foremost, yeah, it is about fun, but it's also about getting our name out there and really getting big, um, being played internationally, and um, just, like I said, getting our name out there getting our music out there for the world to hear. So now have you come have you come stateside yet? Yeah, we've um, we've got um, our new C D Lonely at the Top. Um, it was released to 30, 33 countries. Thirty three countries through a radio promoter. And um, so we're just slowly, you know, getting our name out there and um, it has been played in several radio stations across the States and across the world. Okay, now, do you have any future plans as far as coming to the States to perform? We would love to. It's just, I don't think we've looked that far ahead and how, how to get shows out there. Um, it, you know, I mean, we, we work a lot throughout Ontario, and that's as far as we've gone with the performing aspect, so... Now, when you perform, do you perform mostly in clubs? Yeah, we do. Um, we do a lot of clubs, but we're venturing out and trying to get um, doing more festivals. Um, festivals, concerts, we you know, opened up for a big act last year, which was phenomenal. Dr. Hook well, it was an awesome show. He's still performing? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was his farewell tour. So we, we opened up for him in Barry at the Sound Empire. Wow. So I mean, so nice I, I haven't heard that name in a long <laughs> time. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. It was probably our highlight of our of our career so far. Anyways, it was mine, so I can't speak for them. But. Now, we have, in the States, I'm, I'm sure, just as in Canada, but we have a lot of fairs around here uh, mid to late summers. <laughs> If you guys ever get a chance to come down our way, you know yeah, you're going to have to look us up just so we can uh, venture as close to the stage as possible just to, to listen to you perform. Oh, definitely. <laughs> we've got any connections, let us know. We'll fly up there tomorrow. <laughs> well, we, we, I've had individuals actually uh, from the UK, a matter of fact, uh, asking well, how would they be able to, to come out here to showcase their stuff. And I I said, well, I, I, I don't have that key to, uh, to get you to perform out here because of what we do. Uh, however, I can, I can send you uh, information pertaining to various festivals with phone numbers and stuff that uh, if you wish to contact to or whoever contacts you as a band uh, can look it up that way. I mean, we've, we've got some major festivals just in uh, New England. Uh, one's called the Big E, which is basically short for Ex Exposition Fair uh, in Springfield, Massachusetts. And wow. uh, that is a, uh, a fair where it entails all of the New England states uh, wow. coming, coming to the one locale. Uh, and they have uh, two or three different um, areas to perform in. Uh, they have one uh, main coliseum for the for the, the main uh, performers, and they have one or two other ones for those people that are just walking around the, the fair themselves to stop by and listen to them perform. Okay. Well, you know, it is only a 10-hour drive, so just let us know. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if you want, I can... 10 hours to Massachusetts. Well, if, if you want, I can, I'll send you up some uh, information in case you guys are interested okay. in contacting them to see exactly what... You need to yeah, do. Yeah, right? No, nope. I, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. Now, 
you're, the next song that we're talking about uh, that we haven't talked about yet is called <laughs> Need to Know. <laughs> so, um, can you tell our viewers what that song's all about? Well, you know, I, these are hard questions because although I wrote the lyrics, it is it's something that I felt like the passion I felt in writing these songs at the moment. And like I said, in every song, you need to listen to the lyrics to get to get the feeling. It's basically you want to know the song is about you need to know if this person that you're in love with feels the same way about you. Well, I need to know and you guys need to know, so here's Need to Know by the Sandra Good Band.
Now, two, two basically questions, two basic, basic questions, I mean, you know, Keith working here, all these fun. Uh, the last two basic questions are, what are your highlights to date? And who and what are your influences? I think we already answered my, my latter question already earlier in the show, so we won't have to go there. So, what are your highlights to date? Um, like individually or as a band? Oh, heck. Go for broke. As, well, okay, I, I'm going to speak for as a band because we're talking about our band. So, um, I would have to say last year, July, opening up for Dr. Hook. Yep. Uh, definitely a highlight of, of our career. Um, another highlight, um, Releasing our, our debut CD, Lonely at the Top, it took us 17 months to write and record and produce the album. A lot of hard work from Barry writing the riffs for me and then the lyrics and then coming to get together as the band to, to collaborate and write the songs. And in the studio, there's so many duplicating tracks, it was, it was a long process. So definitely a highlight. We had a, a big CD release party back in August. And highlight, another highlight would be um, just recently hooking up with a radio promoter and getting our, our CD out, our songs out to 32 countries. So we're becoming international now, not just Canadian based, which is great. And um, highlight working with these guys every day. Well, two, two things on, on, um, with me is it, it seems lately I've been getting. Um, a lot more Canadian-born um, artists getting their material on our show, which is outstanding uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we've had artists from California to Singapore, from Sweden to Australia, but lately we're getting <laughs> we're we're getting more from Canada, more from the U.S. Believe it or not, even though uh, you would think I'd be getting a lot from the U.S., but I had been getting a lot more from the U.K. <laughs> as far as that part is concerned. So, I mean, it, it, I'm feeling great that these these individuals are coming out of the woodwork uh, due to promoters, uh, uh, producers that I'm actually finally meeting. Uh, and then I, I just keep my ear open for other artists as as we go. So, but my the question that I want to come up with, <laughs> since you opened up for Dr. Hook, does he still wear his outlandish clothes that he normally wore? He sure does. Yeah. And his hat, he had his hat on. Wow. Did he? Yeah. Oh, that's outstanding. That's outstanding. It was, it was amazing just to talk to him too after the show. I used to um, uh, hang out with Janet Joplin, Johnny Cash. He told the stories about hanging out with them, and it was just, yeah, it was, it was an awesome moment. Wow. In our career. Yeah. Now, the, the last song of this interview uh, is called Hey You. Um, God, and I, <laughs> I'm still going to ask you, about well, how'd you come up with that song? <laughs> well, that song is funny because I wrote that song 20 years ago. I wrote the, the song and I, I brought it to Barry and he changed it up. Like he, you know, he changed the guitar rhythm. He, he wrote his own lead in the, in the song and... But I wrote those lyrics 20 years ago um, based on a relationship that I was in. And um, I wrote it very young. Um, and it's basically just um, asking the person that I was with, you know, how can you do this to me? Um, how can you destroy what we had? And I'm basically moving on. Okay. And, well, hey, you. Yeah, you. Here's Sandra Good performing. Hey, you. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs>
sure if we if we got the full hour in but uh, the clock is telling me that the interview is coming to an end one final thing that I that I want from you guys is how my viewers can get to see your material what websites do you have okay so we've got our first and foremost we have our website which is uh, www Sandra Goodband. Is that Sandra Goodband? Sandra Goodband. Sandra Goodband dot com. Sandra, Sandra what? Sandra, just Sandra Goodband dot com. Oh, Sandra Good. Sandra Goodband dot com. Okay. Uh, we have Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Okay. And we have our Twitter handle, which is at Sandra Goodband. At Sandra Goodband. <laughs> Sandra Goodband. Well, we, that's going to be a lot of info. So. Um, well, yes, no. There's three main sites right there. They're outstanding sites uh, because by, you're on YouTube. YouTube, sorry, yeah, YouTube, Instagram, Sonic Vid. We're all over the media, so we're doing we're doing well. Um, for Twitter followers, I think we're at about sixty-eight thousand Twitter followers, so we're doing okay. I'd say sixty-eight thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm lucky if I have 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got another one with us now. Uh, well, okay. I, I thank you as far as that. I don't, I don't get on Twitter much. I mean, I'm there, but I don't get on it much. You know, you, it's just I'm, I'm here, 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 and but I'm here doing what I'm doing here instead of all that other stuff. Yeah. But, and like I said, on the, on all our sites, you can you can access our our recent photos, our videos. Uh, pictures, anything, anything that you need, events coming up, uh, everything's on every site. So, well, uh, I'm gonna say from from all of us, but it's only me, um, and OMN TV plus our uh, our parent television station, Nutmeg TV. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing us into your home to uh, to showcase and have an interview with uh, the Sandra Good Band and meet yes. you three individually, and said thank you. Yeah. Well, welcome back to what's left of the uh, Sandra Goodman uh, interview. We actually have time for ooh, two more songs. And our first performer is a, a group from Germany called the UK Project. Their song don't play with my heart. I know you'll enjoy.
job there. Gentlemen, our last performer of the night is a young lady that we uh, almost Skyped, I'm going to say almost a year ago, um, from Florida, travels uh, throughout Europe, has that uh, rough southern style blues style of music about her. Her name is Kelly Rucker, and the song that she'll be performing now is a song called You're Leaving Me. I know you like her. Enjoy. Oh, 
believe in me. see on the wall. The show is done. I, I, I want to thank the uh, uh, Ontario Canadian Band, uh, the Sandra Good Band, for uh, taking the time out to allow us into their home to be interviewed. Uh, I want to thank the, the German band UK Project uh, and I want to thank uh, Kelly Rucker. So before we leave, I want to thank Nutmeg TV for allowing us to be showcased at the station. Uh, I want to thank Frontier and I want to thank uh, Comcast for cable casting. I, I want to thank you for stopping by uh, to watch our program. So, without you, there'd be no show. So, from all of us here at OMN TV, all of you out there, have a good night and a safe week. Good night. <laughs>